Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The South African Navy is having to review its fleet requirements as new operational demands put strain on its current capacity. Keith Campbell joins me to take a look at developments. Keith, welcome to Second Take. Why is the Navy having to muscle up? Well, there are two factors involved. Uh, firstly, the government's decision to put the Defence Force back in charge of security in the country's borders. Now, this obviously affects the Army and the Air Force, and everyone's aware of troops being deployed on the border and helicopters being deployed to support them. This is a process that's not yet complete. But it also affects the Navy, because the Navy is responsible for patrolling the country's maritime borders, which, uh, when you think of it, are very extensive indeed and do not merely include the coast of South Africa proper, but include uh, Prince Edward Island and Marion Island uh, down in the Southern Ocean. The second factor, of course, is the commitment of the South African Navy to anti-piracy patrols in the northern Mozambique Channel. Uh, Somali pirates reached the northern Mozambique Channel early last year, and this resulted in Mozambique asking for South African assistance as the Mozambican Navy is minute and not capable of undertaking patrols uh, in the open sea. Uh, South Africa responded uh, and has maintained a frigate on continuous patrol in the region for some months now. Now the frigate force only numbers four ships. So one of those is normally undergoing maintenance, leaving an operational force of three and now one of those three operational frigates is pretty much permanently assigned to the Mozambican Channel. Now, everyone knows that they've got new frigates and new submarines, but these are the primary combatants of the fleet. The Navy also has what we can call secondary combatants, patrol vessels, mine countermeasures vessels, much smaller uh, that operate normally in coastal, uh, coastal waters. These are quite old now. For offshore patrol, the Navy uses three converted strike craft, which have had their missiles removed, and the Navy has four mine hunters, mine countermeasures vessels, of which three are normally in operation. These are also, they're all about a quarter of a century old, so they all need replacing. So we've got the Navy's secondary ships are old, and the demands on the fleet for patrolling duties are greater. For example, with one frigate now in the Mozambican Channel, that means the patrol vessels and the mine hunters must do more patrolling work to fill the gap left by that frigate. What type of additions has the Navy set its eyes on? Well, the Navy is looking for patrol vessels. Um, two, there are two categories of patrol vessels they're looking at. Uh, one carries called an offshore patrol vessel, the other one they're calling an inshore patrol vessel. Uh, these are much simpler vessels than uh, the frigates. The Navy's idea is to make these multi-purpose vessels, uh, to use a concept pioneered by the Royal Danish Navy, whereby you have containerized systems that can be f put onto a ship or taken off a ship in a matter of hours uh, and allowed to switch roles. So uh, the inshore patrol vessels would also be able to act as mine countermeasures vessels when fitted with a containerized mine countermeasures equipment. Or they could act simply as patrol vessels without that equipment, perhaps with uh, extra guns for, for the patrol task. And nevertheless, these are much simpler vessels than conventional warships. They're not really intended to engage in battle. Not all naval ships are warships. Warships are obviously intended to fight, but navies need uh, very secondary and auxiliary vessels. Uh, tankers for fuel, replenishment vessels for food and ammunition, things like that. And also simple patrol craft for the maritime equivalent of a police patrol car. Yes, armed but really intended to undertake operations like anti-piracy, anti-smuggling, counter-terrorism, not really intended for full-scale battle and therefore simpler and cheaper than a proper warship of the same size would be. 
and that is what the South African Navy, and that is what the South African Navy is aiming at, a simpler, cheaper kind of vessel than a proper warship would be. How will South Africa foot the bill for these new vessels? Well, yes, even though these are intended to be simpler vessels and cheaper vessels, in this day and age, nothing is cheap. Uh, the Irish Republic is currently buying two offshore patrol vessels and it's going to cost about 100 million euros for these two craft. So that gives you an idea of, of the scale of the cost. The inshore patrol vessels should be cheaper, the, but there are other factors at play. We don't know exactly how many the Navy wants. Once upon a time, they were hoping for eight offshore patrol vessels. Then they switched to three offshore patrol vessels and five inshore patrol vessels. We know they've changed the numbers again because of the pressures created by the piracy problem, but we do not know what these numbers are. The other complicating factor is that while getting a multi-purpose vessel is cheaper than buying specialist vessels, an OPV that can be re-rolled in different roles is more expensive than an OPV that can only do one role. So we're not exactly certain what the cost will be. Now, South Africa has many uh, burdens on, on the Exchequer, but the country is, in overall terms, uh, not the extremely poor. It's, I think, about the 25th biggest economy in the world in real terms, whereas the Ireland, for example, is about the 56th biggest economy in the world in, in real terms. The country, bearing in mind the importance of securing maritime frontiers, including protection of the exclusive economic zone and the value of the fish stocks uh, the country has, the potential value of the seabed resources and the resources under the seabed, the acquisition of, of the new patrol vessels should be well within the country's capabilities. It comes down to a matter of political will by the government. Keith, thank you very much. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.